Welcome to our trip to the Finnish archipelago of Åland, famous for its spike fishing, where in this beautiful place we will spend 10 days. Our journey begins early in the morning just outside Prague. First, let's introduce the members of our Tomáš, our captain, driver and above all the director of adventure and fishing. Frederick Julian, one of the most famous fishermen in Europe whom we pick up along the way as well as Jarda, who has been going to Elland Islands every year since 1999. Radek, who is not very friendly with the camera and our cameraman Martin. We left early in the morning with a seven-hour journey ahead of us to the famous German port city of Rostock, a beautiful historic city dating back to the 13th century and the fourth largest port city in Germany. All the paperwork was arranged for us by travel agency Peppa, so all we had to do in Rostock was pick up the tickets on board the ferry. The cruises were provided by TT Line and Stena Line on their large-scale ferries and for our crew with trailer, the cruise cost around 550 euros and lasted seven and a half hours. We also had a cabin included in the price, so we were able to get some rest for nine hours overnight drive across Sweden. Fred was waiting for us in Sweden, not far from the port town of Grisselham. Having the last leg of the journey ahead of us, a four-hour ferry ride to the Åland Archipelago. Although the Åland Islands belong to Finland, the archipelago is closer to Sweden and at the same time the official language is Swedish, because historically these islands belong to Sweden. There are 7,000 islands, but only about 60 of them are inhabited with the vast majority of the 30,000 population living on the main island of Fasta Island. Our journey ended north of the capital on the island of Burgo at the Norquist campsite, which was right by the water and had its own motorboat. In the camp, surrounded by the beautiful nature, there are nine typical and fully equipped Finnish cabins, fittingly equipped with a sauna. 
We unpacked our things and were able to pull down the boat on the water. Our main goal was the pike. It is an apex predator that lives up to 30 years of age with a mouth full of sharp teeth slightly curved inward and which in these parts grows to a size of 130 centimeters. In the last 50 years, a little over 10 fish were caught here, which reached a size larger than 120 centimeters. In addition to pike, it is also possible to fish for perch and zander. Even before we went on our first hunt, shell, the manager of the campsite visited us and advised us on a few places where pike were active now, so we could go on and start discovering the beauty of the local brackish waters. Good bikey! <laughs> Hi guys, uh, we are in the Alan Islands with uh, Frederic Julien. Hi Fred. Yes. Hi. And uh, we want to show you uh, the lures uh, for pike fishing. Yes, so we selected quite a lot of pike lures. So two different baits. There are some kind of bait that you like. Yes, uh, my favorite uh, is uh, this Monu, lure. Monu bait, Monu bait. Uh, yes, uh, it is uh, Maunu bait. Maunu bait, I have one also. It's uh, one lure that I, I use also in a different mm -hmm. size. And um, what I can say already, you know, in your selection, you select um, really fat profile, like the Maunu bait. So yeah. this one yeah. move a lot of water. Big paddle tail, so also a lot of vibration. And uh, in our selection, we, we see that we have a lot of white a lot of blue because of the food of yes, the pike. Yes, uh, there is a big uh, population uh, herring. Yeah. Now. So uh, this one really imitate herring. And so that's the reason uh, when you travel, if we can give you one advice, is try to get information before your travel uh, on which type of uh, forage and, and, and bait fish uh, you're gonna you're gonna have so basically that is going to guide you through your color selection uh, when I go up north in Scandinavia there's color that I never uh, go without is this brownish color the burbot 
uh, everything which is motor oil. Again, in my selection, I get a little bit the same thing, like a lot of water displacement with fat lures and slim lures also that um, make a different vibration. You also have in the money bait and here in the headbanger we have a uh, tail, like this one, the grub tail. So grub tail also is very, um, very efficient. You need to have them. It's a little bit more subtle vibration. So sometimes they want that, they don't want the big, uh, the big noise. So you, you're going to need this. Fred dedicated one day to filming from a small boat for our YouTube channel and it was Fred's biggest pike and we even managed to film a fish right from the very first strike. Yes, yes, yes! We could fish in the Bergo and Schwarzmara areas, for which we paid 60 euros per person for a week and we don't have to worry about a lack of good spots, they are literally everywhere. Also the grass, which was our biggest enemy, and any contact with the bottom was punished with the tuft of grass caught on our triple hooks. And of course, the pike were hidden in the grasses, so they were not recognizable by the echo sounder and thus the echo sounder at least helped us to find the bait close to the surface. And the truth is that thanks to the technology, even if you don't manage to pull off a strike, you can see your bait in being washed by a fish. So the rush of adrenaline there is similar to when you make the actual strike. Fish, 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 fish. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh, big bite. Oh, oh. It came to my bait uh -huh. and then it's. Uh, uh, uh. That was a quick release. <laughs> Good one. In addition to pike, other types of predatory fish live here as well. They are perch, which are quite plentiful here, but due to their size, they weren't a target fish for us. Much more interesting for us were Xander, of which there are few here. We managed to find one spot with the hard rocky bottom and fish them beautifully.
In addition as a bonus, during the Xander fishing, Yarda caught the second biggest fish of the expedition, 117 centimeters long. Uh, tell me what uh, what spinnerbait? Yeah, spinnerbait works 12 months a year everywhere. So this this spinnerbait is uh, you have a good example there. One really uh, flashy with some um, like a silver uh, a skirt and a willow leaves. So the willow leaves is going to make less vibration, turn a little bit faster. So I will recommend it to fish a little bit deeper. And this Colorado blade is going to drag more water, yeah. sink less, and, but give more vibration. So I will, uh, I will use this in a little bit less water. So, um, and with a grub tail, same. Every uh, speed retrieve it will work. You don't, uh, you don't ask yourself if, the, if uh, the shad tail is going to work or not. Grub tail is a must have uh, for the spinner bait. And in the same spirit, that's, I'm going to use a grub tail also very often on the chatter bait. Here it's small, smaller lure, more compact. And sometimes you, um, if you have low activity, you're going to be happy to have a, to fish for small, mm -hmm. small pike. Uh, it's going to be fun, you're going to make numbers and occupy a little bit uh, some uh, tough uh, time on the water. So getting small bait in your selection is a must have as well. So I think uh, now we have a little bit of everything. No, no. What can we say? No, no, Fred. No? <laughs> no. Clothing uh, is missing. Yeah, the clothes. Yeah. You're right. You're right, the clothes. And uh, with Adventa we are, we are lucky because um, we have this concept of multi-layer. Uh, and uh, we have a um, different type of membrane like this one, but also uh, some other uh, more fit for heavy rain. Multi-layers al allowed you to really adjust on the water and put some fleece under, some underwear uh, with uh, bamboo and stretch uh, material, which are really uh, helpful to keep you warm and uh, even when you sweat. So. Um, think about this multi-layer concept and also what I like very much with Adventa is that all our membrane that really support heavy rain, you can pack them, compact them and they don't take any weight and any space. So here uh, I wanted, uh, we stop there because uh, I wanted to show you why um, we pick this area. We, when we first arrive uh, in the place, I noticed some, some rocks outside of the water and you have to pay attention to that 
very, very often. Uh, in fact, outside of the water, you get um, the sign of what goes under the water as well. So it means that if you have a, a line of rocks that stay, stand outside of the water, potentially uh, the structures, those structures are going to uh, go under the water as well and follow kind of a line there. Here, typically, is not a line, it's many, many rocks. So the, the area is quite flat. But outside, uh, outside in, uh, on, on the shore, we see big rocks. And also in the water, we see small rocks. So potentially over this area is going to be many, many rocks under the water. And that's what I want to search. This structure very often are going to hold fish and you should pay attention to whatever break the landscape onshore will break the landscape under the water. The biggest spike as usual was the most unexpected catch because it was our cameraman Martin that caught it. It was exactly 120 centimeters. 120, cool. The trip to Allen Islands was a great experience for us. It is a paradise for natural lovers, as well as for lovers of spinning. The whole expedition was very demanding, starting with the journey, ending with the catching really big pike. But thanks to it, we experienced many adventures that will stay with us forever and we cannot wait for the next expedition to begin.